Uh, my question was about the Mongeke because that has been dealt with. The only part I would like to clarify you to clarify, Honorable Mother Karua, is you in the press we've been reading that people are saying that you are you are sympathetic to Mongeke simply because you are calling them a criminal gang instead of Malaysia. The issue of Mongeke is security related. Anybody who talks about extrajudicial killings in Kenya is silenced by you are sympathetic to Mungiki. I will not be silenced. Extrajudicial killings, even of a suspected criminal, are evil. It's a violation of human rights. You will kill a known criminal who nobody will have such, uh, sympathy with. Tomorrow you will kill their brother. And you say because he's a brother to that bad person, that family is very bad. That is what is happening in Kenya. That is a name being used to persecute a whole generation of young men from the Kikuyu community and um, some fewer ones from the Mount Kenya community where the names coincide. Where every young Kikuyu man is guilty until the contrary is proved. I do not advocate for anybody to be arrested on the phantom of being Mugiki. Arrest him by name and by the crime they have committed. Otherwise, it is a tool for persecution. I am surprised that you sitting in UK can advocate for extermination of any group. When I got a call being told, the former member for Batondo, no, or son? Moirore's son, had been shot dead in the morning at Westlands. Mm. Up to this day, that case is going on in Kenya. The police theory was they had shot a Mugiki. Whenever they kill somebody, whether that person has committed an offense or not, it is enough when they say Mugiki, everybody fears and nobody follows. This case was followed because the father was able to stand up and when he talked, the newspapers would quote him. He's a known person. How many children of poor people have died under those circumstances? Maybe the police have killed that, but they've also killed innocent people. But are they entitled to also kill the thugs? Let the courts hang you. We shall know the law has hanged you. Policemen are not ex executioners. When you allow that generalization, it nets criminals suspect and the innocent. And when Maina Kiari and the Human Rights Commission in 2007 said that about 500 young men have been killed, I actually thought it was an exaggeration. I knew some innocent people had been killed because you can't live in Kenya and fail to know what is happening. People will come complain to you. We had started raising concerns internally in government. Police were obviously denying, but I thought 500 was too many then. After studying the matter closely, <coughs> I now actually honestly believe that we may have lost between 2006 and now about 2,000 or so young men. It is criminal. It is not something I can agree to. In my home district, Kerenyaba, <coughs> early this year, in the neighboring constituency, Kerogoya Kutus and uh, Dia constituency, which neighbor Gishogo. It didn't happen in Katina, it happened in Kirinyaba. The people of Kagumo shopping center were being disturbed by a group of youth, about 20 of them, going under that name. These days I even refuse to mention it. So it's a tool of persecution. These people were exhorting money they were beating people up, and when you failed to pay their fine, eventually they went beyond. They captured people's wives and held them for illicit sex. That is what enraged the community. They went out, burnt their houses, killed several. But my issue with the police, when the community became enraged and went after these people, the police would have gone in, told them, please, halt, show us all the suspects, we now arrest them, to stop the carnage. 
They did it. Instead, reports on the ground indicate they were escorting the vigilantes, waiting for them about half a kilometer behind. And when they are told a person has been killed and is now dead, they immediately collect the body, take it to the Kirwaya mortuary, ensure that post-mortem is done for the week, and the person is buried within 48 hours. If not the same day, by the next day, they force the family to bury without any rights. And then they tell us when we ask them, but we have no complainant. If you are under intimidation and the police are pro not protecting you, who will write a statement? So they killed 14 and burned several houses. Then there was the repris uh, repressal at the boundary of Kirinyaga and Karatina, which is now called the Karatina Massacre at Gadaili, where they killed, the so-called Mugiki killed 29 people that morning. And the vigilantes in the morning killed a lady teacher, branding her as a Mungiki supporter. It is said that at some stage she had employed Mungiki. Is that reason enough to kill somebody? She was choked to death in full view of television cameras, in full view of police who pretended they couldn't do anything because the vigilantes were too many, not even trying to fire tear gas. Images of a woman trying to raise her body, it's like calling for help and everybody watching until she dies. I don't know which one of you wants to live in a country like that. The members of parliament are terrified. They don't speak. The councillors won't, and I don't blame the councillors, because they live there and their houses are going to be raided. I'm from the neighboring constituency, Ishoku. I raised the matter on their behalf. I'm still raising it. And that is how the police came to tell the newspapers that I'm under danger of being attacked by vigilantes. It was not the vigilantes, that was the police making a suggestion. And it convinced me immediately that it is the government state agencies who are after me because they don't want me to expose their inefficiency because I have raised it in parliament. So I went back to parliament and told them I'm not being intimidated and let the world know, should anything happen to me or my family, it is police they must ask. I've been texted while I was here this morning. I have not confirmed, but somebody texted me that there has been nine more murders today, which they indicated it could be a reprisal now from the Mugiki. But later on, after we buried the Karatina massacre victims, I learned that it is not 14 people who had been murdered by vigilantes, as I was saying. In the month of March, of April, they had murdered 25 people by cutting them on the head. In the month of May, 18 people by hanging. They stand with the pangas, they put the rope up and give you the nose to put around your neck, failure to which they chop you. Those are not suicides, those are murders. 43 people, and then you add the 34, 73. Is that something we can keep quiet? Even at the risk of someone saying I'm supporting Mungiki, I support the lives of every person, including of suspects. And if we are to weed out crime, you don't weed it out by further crime. You weed it out in a legal manner. This is not the primitive society where we used to burn thieves and roll them down with beehives. The beehive today is the law. You are my lawyer for burning the beef in the law. And that is the position I'm saying. And if the response of the system is that I am there for supporting criminals, I tell them shame on them. If the police had not been asleep, if the provincial administration had not been asleep, how come people are collecting money and beating others at Kagumo and sleeping at the, with their wives for long and this? presence of security agents on the ground, including intelligence agencies. The truth of the matter is that some of them take a cut from these illegal activities. <coughs> that is why they will not go to arrest them. That is why they have to wait at a distance as they are killed and only go when they cannot see them. So I have no reason to support any crime because I can be a victim of that crime too. I want you arrested by your name. Not by a name that then penalizes your brother, your cousin, and your fellow villagers. There are police guns who arrest, and if you don't cough up the amount they want, they shoot you. And I'm sure you have heard about that. 